and listen. All right. All right. Uh, so today uh, I want us to look at, um, where is it? Here it is. Uh, um. Let's see, Mark chapter 7. Mark, no pun intended, Mark. <laughs> Mark chapter 7. Uh, and we are going to look at verses 14 through 15. Just those two verses and then 21 through 23. Okay. Okay. All right. Mark chapter seven, verse 14 and 15, and then 21 through 23. All right. So if you have it, you can uh, do us a favor and go right ahead and begin to read that. Mark chapter seven, verses 14 and 15. You can go ahead with that and then we'll switch over to the other. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto you, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. All right, now read verses 21 through 23. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murder, thefts, con- c- covetousness, wickedness, deceit, and whatever this other word is, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All right. So today we're going to talk about the heart of the problem. Today we're talking about the heart of the problem. Now, let's think about this. Y'all know how we do. Let's think about this. If um, we ask the question, what is wrong in our society, what's wrong in our homes, what's wrong in our neighborhoods, in our streets. If we ask the question, what's wrong in our churches even, what might we say? Anybody just throw some things out. What, if, you, if, you, if you wanted to identify what is wrong in these areas, somebody throw some ideas out of what you think is really challenging us in those areas, in our homes, in the streets, in our churches, in our neighborhoods, our communities, in our home, uh, our, our uh, schools, what would you say some of the problems are? One problem would be a disrespect. Disrespect, okay. Uh, I was listening to a report today about Arlington High School, how they are trying to turn that school around. They're trying to turn that school around because of what kind of problems? In the school, come give me some ideas. Academic, academic problems. Mm-hmm. What, what, what about the academic problems? They're, um, they're low. Low, yeah. low academics. Yeah, they're not um, like passing the test. They're not passing the tests, right? Yeah. What else? And the Behavior. children. Behavior. Yeah, the children not paying attention. Not paying attention. And the teachers are not dealing with. I ain't gonna be bothered with you. All right, teachers and are not and doing this. Teachers. They, and they, and the mom and dad. Parents aren't doing their part. You said respect earlier, right? Right. All right. Now, let's talk about the homes. We go, go home and we, and y'all know we got some challenges at home. What kind of things might you say are challenging at home? Talk to me. I think, well, when we were coming up, 
we couldn't go in the living room or whatever to hear grown-up conversations. Mm -hmm. These kids nowadays are just listen to everything. Okay. And they listen to all that kind of bad type, well, to me, bad type of music. Music, and so it's language. And, and it's children raising children. All right. And they don't have respect for each other. No respect. And the parents and the, they fighting between each other. Mm -hmm. And they're not really teaching the kids love. All right. So so there's no the, the, the training. The Bible talks about training up a child in the way the child should go. When a child is older, the child should not depart. So you're talking a lot about training. You're talking about the Bible talks about do not let, you know, certain kind of foul language come out of your mouth. Right. Uh, uh, and, and all this kind of stuff. So you're talking about a lot of behavioral issues. Right. A lot of things that people are doing that shares or shows rather that we got a problem in the house right now we could probably come to a conclusion that there are some behaviors at work that show that we have problems at work too if we have, if we work if we're working uh, if you live in a neighborhood you could probably drive down the street and point to some behavioral problems in the streets are y'all following this I'm just asking the question, what kinds of things do you see as problems? Now, watch this. If you, I'm just, you know, just, just framing this argument. If you uh, detected some problems with yourself, physically, health related, if it got bad enough, what would you do? Go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. Right? Now. When you go to the doctor, what do you want the doctor to do? Tell you what's wrong. Okay. Fix it. Fix it. Ultimately, you want to fix it. Right. right? You want, ultimately, you want the doctor to fix it. Okay. So hopefully y'all are flowing with where we're going. So if what we see going on in our homes, in our neighborhoods, our communities, our churches... If it gets bad enough, what might we want to do? We want it fixed. Yeah, we want to fix it. Okay, we want to fix it. So you already have articulated it when you said it this way. You said, tell me what's wrong. But now, you know, telling me what's wrong ain't enough. Right? right. You can tell me what's wrong, but you got to fix it. But the doctor says, I can't fix it. Unless I first know what's wrong. Because what could happen? What could, what could go wrong? How bad can that get? <laughs> right? How bad can that get if you go about trying to fix what ain't broke? And in so doing, you neglect what is broke. You know, how about my arm is broke and the doctor brings out a Band-Aid? You're like, hey, that, that's not going to get it done. Right? No, 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 no. Right? We have somebody that tomorrow, I got to go to the hospital tomorrow morning. She got to go back to surgery because what they did didn't fix the problem. Right? So, Fit. So, so for as much as I want my house fixed, I want my money, my, my, you know, the way I do it, I want it fixed. For as much as I want the community fixed, for as much as I want, you know, the stuff going on wrong at the church fixed, my, I want stuff my job. Yeah. For as much as I want that stuff fixed, if I don't first get the right diagnosis, chances are, we could mistreat, you know, or, or treat the situation with the wrong solution. Does that make sense? Now, here's what we know. Um, there are degrees to our problems, right? So all of y'all know, and y'all can guarantee you, you know of somebody 
in your situation, in your life, in your family, in your home, on your job, you know, in the community, somebody, you know that all it takes is a cursory look at their situation. You ain't got to have no expertise. You ain't got to have no degree. You ain't got to have no additional education, no specialized training. You look at their situation, you go, you know what, baby, your problem is simple. Does that make sense? Some people you can look at and just say, mm, you know what, if you would just <laughs> control your anger, you keep blowing up at everybody, you know? You, be, you know what, if you would just let that thing go, let it go. If you would just forgive such and such and so and so. You know, some people you can, right? The situation just ain't that deep, right? It ain't that deep. What you're dealing with is simple. But then there are other things that's going on. It is not that simple. If you go to the doctor uh, and you sneezing, right? Mm-hmm. Doctor might take out a thesoscope. Is that a, that's what it's called? Thesoscope, whatever. And they might listen. They say, breathe in, breathe out. And they can tell you, okay, this is what we need to do. Antibiotic, keep it moving. But there's some stuff they say, you know what? You, you need an x-ray. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> some other stuff say, you know what? Uh, we need to do an uh, MRI. I mean, we need to dig a little deeper into your situation to find out what's really going on. Because we can't just look at you and tell. And I think part of our challenge in the church is that we have people who cover up their issues with the right clothes. They cover up their issues with the right words. They cover up, you know what I mean, their issues with the right behavior. And they think they've got us fooled. Right. But the reality is, in order for them to fix what's wrong in their life, you got to go deeper. You cannot rely on just what you see going on on the outside. We got to dig deeper. And so today, that's kind of what I'm wanting to deal with is what is the heart of many of our problems? Is that making sense, Mark? What's the heart of many of our problems? Just like. If you were sick and you went to the hospital, you want it fixed, but you can't fix something if you don't really know what's going on. All right. So if we're dealing with this from a spiritual perspective, somebody turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter four, verse 23. Uh, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Because here is really what is going to help us to understand how God interprets what's really going on in our lives. Because here's what we know. What we know is, is that before someone has a heart attack, chances are they have had some other symptoms beforehand. You know what I'm saying? Before a marriage ends in divorce, chances are there were some symptoms ahead of time, right? Okay? And so it is often easier to focus on the symptoms than to get to the root of the problem. I know for me, I have headaches, right? I have headaches. Well, I'm constantly treating the headache without dealing with, I need glasses, <laughs> right? That's ultimately my problem. I need to go to the optometrist. If I deal with this, it will deal with that. But I'm constantly taking migraine medicine. Why? Because I'm dealing with the symptom and I'm never dealing with the problem. You don't know. All right, who has Proverbs? What did I say? Proverbs... Uh, 24, 23. Because here's the deal. Here's, here it is. What does it say? Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Oh. So that helps us to understand that if we only treat the issue and never treat where the issue came from will continue to be dealing with the issues over and over 
and over again. So he says, keep your what? Your heart. Some translations say keep your mind, right? Your heart, guard it above all else because it determines the course of your life. That's a New Living Translation. All right? Your heart determines the course of your life. Somebody say this after me. My heart determines the course of my life. Okay? And so the only way you are going to know the condition of your heart is that you have to go to a physician. In this context, let's just call him the great physician. (laughs) Okay? Because remember what the word of God says, that while we look on the outside, God sees the what? The inside. God looks upon the heart. And so God is the one who understands and knows that no matter how much you try to trick me, you cannot trick God. And so if God does his search of your heart and determines that your heart is sick, guess what? He going to also say your life is sick, too. If your heart is sick, chances are I can look at your life and your life is going to be sick too. (laughs) Does that make sense? (laughs) So your heart must be pretty valuable, doesn't it? it? (laughs) The condition of your heart is extremely important. Okay? Now, watch this. Um, uh, You got to take out the trash. Mark, okay. You ever, you ever take out the trash? I don't know. What do you do with it? What do you do with it? Where do you take it? Um, out on the sidewalk. Out on the sidewalk. Now, Mark, have you ever taken the trash to the sidewalk? And as you was walking away from the trash, you was looking back at it, concerned about what was going to happen with it. And then you look out. And then when the, when the people came to take the trash, you watch them drive away. And then you might get in your car. You might follow the truck because you want to know where the trash is going. I ain't never done that. You ain't never. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you care about where the trash goes? Because uh, they've already taken what I have. What? You said it. Say it again. Because it's trash. (laughs) Because it's trash. (laughs) And you don't need it. Right? So since you don't need it, technically, you don't care what happens to it. The point is, is when you have trash in your life, you need to put it out. And when you put it out, You don't want to watch and see. You don't care what happens to it. You just care that the trash that is cluttering up your heart and your house is gone. But if your heart is valuable, right, you wouldn't put your your uh, crystal out on the curb. Right. You wouldn't do that. You want that to be kept where where you keep your flat you know your, what they call a flatware and all that where you keep all your silver and your like in, the in, the cabinet. in the cabinet you keep it someplace and some of y'all y'all keep it places where it's really safe y'all lock that stuff up <laughs> because it is valuable and so here's what here's what this is saying the bible says guard your heart where above I'm back in Proverbs. Above all. Above all. She says your heart shouldn't be put on the curb. It's too valuable for that. Your heart should be kept in a place where it shows how much you value it because out of it comes everything else. Is this deep? Well, it may not be deep to y'all, but it's deep to me. This is some deep stuff. I want to keep my heart in a special place because it is just that 
important for the rest of my life. Is that making sense? And that's what doctors and things are doing now to keep your heart straight. Keep mm -hmm. your heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So now, all right, here it is. Uh, here's the challenge with your heart, with your heart. Your heart is constantly under attack. Right. And again, I mean, we can take the, 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 the physical example of how we deal in terms of what we eat, uh, the environment, the stress, you know, so not just your diet, but also the stress of life and all those things. And we can add those things up. And we know that in a physical sense, your heart is constantly having to deal with what we put our hearts through in life. Well, guess what? Your spiritual heart is always under attack, too. Right. Somebody turn to first Peter chapter five. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Somebody, uh, one of y'all do uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and Mark, look up Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you what, while I'm doing that, Aunt Evie, I want you to go ahead and look up Jeremiah 17. So we'll just do all three of those. Aunt Louise, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Mark, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, and Aunt Evie, Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got it? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 from Mark, and Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. And this helps us to understand the nature of what our hearts are constantly dealing with. Okay. You got them little bit thin pages. I don't see how you can do it. I like the size of the letters. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can mm -hmm. know it? The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. That's a mess, ain't it? What you got, uh, Mark? It says, "For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of witnesses in the heavenly places." Mm -hmm. This is that battle that we're dealing with. And, that, and I like that, that particular scripture because what it does is it pulls us out of the flesh and blood conversation and gets us into the spiritual conversation. Right now, we can use this as a metaphor to connect the dots. But once you get the dots connected, we can we cannot understand the struggle that we deal with as a flesh and blood struggle. That's what. That's what Eskenazi and that's what IU Health is for. They deal with the flesh and blood problem. But we come to church to come to the great physician to deal with that spiritual wickedness in high places or the hosts as that, as that translation. All right, Aunt Louise, what do you got? Peter 5 and 8. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Be sober, be militant, because your adversary, the devil, as the roaring lion, walked about seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Seeking whom he may devour. Now, and again, we got to get this. The way the enemy is going to get at you, okay, is through the issues of life. The issues of life. Because we all have them. <laughs> Don't we? We all have them. Okay? The question, though, is, is when you have an issue of life, what do you do about it? When you are sick, what do you do? You do nothing, right? You take an aspirin, you know, take a, a Epsom bath, salt bath when you have an issue. Or, I mean, if you get sick enough, if it gets bad enough, you got to do something. You've got to fix it, you know. But the, so the enemy, the enemy doesn't want you to know where to go or what to do when you have 
issues of life. Okay? And so, bottom line is, we don't have an issues problem at Arlington High School or in our schools, in education. We don't have an issues problem in our homes and in our church. Everybody has issues. That ain't, that's not the, that's, having issues is not the issue. The question is, is what is at the root of the issue? And I am arguing today that your heart is at the root of your issues. Is that making sense? So let's move back to Mark chapter seven, verse 14 and 15. Okay. Now, I'm not going to make y'all read that again. I'll read it. It says, then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear all of you. Listen, he said, and try to understand. I'm reading New, New Living Translation. Verse 15. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your somebody say heart heart for from within out of a person's heart come evil. Somebody say thoughts thoughts. thoughts. And then what did uh, what does he do? He begins to chronicle the thoughts sexual immorality theft murder adultery greed wickedness deceit lustful desires envy slander pride foolishness. All of these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. Here's what we, here's wh- wh- where we have to get this piece really y- y- to apply to our life. We got to get this piece really understood. And that is while oftentimes we spend a lot of time badgering people over these issues or these thoughts. The thoughts are not the root of the problem. You see that? We got laws. We have social norms. We have uh, clinical diagnoses and whatnot for all of these problems. Murder, theft. We got laws for murder. We got laws for theft. We got social norms for sexual immorality, right? We have laws for adultery. Well, not adultery. We have social norms for adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit. We got all of this stuff that deals with the thought. But is the thought the issue? No, the thought is the symptom. The thought is my migraine. (laughs) Right? The thought, though, is not the issue. The issue is where did the thought come from? Y'all feel that? (laughs) The issue is, where did it come from? Because if you don't deal with where the thought came from, guess what? You're going to keep having the thought. Right? And so, Jared, Jared, Jared Fogel, Subway. (laughs) All right? He's not accused of sexual immorality with children on one account, is he? It's multiple accounts. There's a young lady, sexual immorality at school. She's not, she's not being uh, uh, charged with one count of sexual uh, misconduct. It's multiple counts. Does that make sense? All right? We had somebody that walked into a school just recently into a cafeteria and start shooting a 14 year old boy. This boy is not about to be drug into court, right? On one count of murder or attempted murder. There are multiple accounts, okay? That have to be addressed. And so for people who are having lustful thoughts, or greedy thoughts, or you, you get what I'm saying? Immoral thoughts, or murderous thoughts, or whatever. Dealing with the thought is not enough. Having laws to lock somebody up, and then having them come out and do the same thing and go right back is an indication that we're dealing with the symptom and we're not really dealing with the problem, are we? Because if we dealt with the problem when they came out, they wouldn't do it again and be put back in, the, in jail or prison. 
What have we done? We have dealt with the issue or the thought, but we never dealt with where the thought came from. It's a heart problem. Okay, let me, and here's the two warnings. Warning number one. The first warning is that we fall into a uh, knowledge trap. That watch this, and let's use uh, let's use uh, uh, young men, young women who have been put in uh, jail or prison for whatever reason, you know, uh, breaking a law or something. If we put them in jail or prison or some type of confinement, and we tell them that you have to take a class, right? And they go to this class and they learn, they get their GED, or they get their associate's degree, or they get their whatever. Just because they have more knowledge does not mean that that's going to eliminate those thoughts. Okay, that's one trap. One trap is, let me just psycho you know, psychoeducate you. Let me just educate you, give you more information, more information, more information. And all of us know that Bernie, what's his name? Uh, Bernie, uh, uh, Bernie, uh, oh, um, I can't think of the guy's name. The guy who had the mega Ponzi scheme and he, and he swindled all these people out of this money who just went to prison. Guy with a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge, correct? He had a lot of knowledge, but that did not change the fact that his heart was messed up. Smart guy, Right? I'm not even going to go to the political route. We're going to leave that alone. I'm just not even going to go there. <laughs> okay? A lot of smart people out there, right? Having more knowledge does not mean that people are not going to be immoral. Here's the second trap. Willpower. Okay? So, what that means is, Mark, when you have the thought, increase your willpower to fight the thought off. Okay? Some people can do it. Problem is, is that that's still a trap because everybody can't, does not have the willpower to fight off these negative thoughts. I'm going to stop smoking. Okay. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to go cold turkey. Using willpower. Some people can. Most people can't. <laughs> okay. So that's a trap. So, Aunt Evie, and, I, and this is the conclusion of this, I'm done. Aunt Evie, if you go to the doctor, you've had symptoms, your arm was numb, fingers tingling, whatever. You go to the doctor, say, Doc, I don't feel well. The doc says, okay, let me do some basic stuff. They say, okay, I can't figure this out with the basics, so we got to go deeper. Let's do a CAT scan. Let's do an MRI, right? Let's do a blood test. And they do that, and they come back, and they say, okay, we need to treat your heart, okay, do they then go do surgery on your arm? Oh. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. Do they then go do hip replacement? No. Oh. No. Yeah. They do, it they, yeah. They do, it. do they then go and do brain surgery? <laughs> if you have a heart problem, what do you need to do? Get to the root of it. You need to go and have heart surgery. Yeah. We, we, you know, we, it's not about, if we know what the problem is, we need to go to the root of the problem, which is the heart. And this is where things become extremely difficult for people. Because it requires opening up and being honest. Telling the truth. Somebody turn to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Yeah, this is this is where most you know people who have these kinds of issues, they struggle in this area right here. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Mm-hmm. 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 Um. Um. Okay, anyone have that? What I say? First John chapter one, verse nine. 
Mm-hmm. Anybody? Uh, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. That's that's not is that first John? Yeah, you in John. First John. You said first John? Uh-huh. First John. Not the book of John. It's first. And you said chapter nine. Chapter one, verse nine. First John, chapter one, verse nine. Okay. Yeah. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There it is. You get that? Confess. Confess. When you have a heart problem, okay, when you have a heart problem and you understand that out of your heart comes these thoughts, the way to control the thoughts is to confess the heart problem. Is to admit I have a problem that IU Health cannot fix. Right? A Band-Aid can't fix this. Psychologists, while they are important, okay, cannot fix a spiritual problem, a heart problem. They can maybe fix a behavior problem. They can fix a habit problem, okay? But a heart problem can only be fixed by, again, what we call this great physician. But you must admit, I have a heart problem. He says, confess your sins to who? To God. And God, the Bible says, is faithful because of his word, faithful and just. That means that if you confess, he's not going to tell you, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, fix your heart, but I'll fix their heart. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix the rich people's hearts, but I'm not going to fix the poor people's heart. You see what I'm saying? He's not going to fix the white people's heart and then not fix the black people's heart. He says, I'm going to fix the heart of those who are willing to confess to me that their hearts have sinned against me. All right. And so he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and then to do what? And then to do what? That's a very, very important word there. So y'all turn that quick. Cleanse us. Cleanse us. Okay. That, word. Oh, that word. Not, yeah. Okay. Faithful and just to forgive us. That you're right. I'm sorry. I, I moved too fast. You're right. Forgive us our sins and to what? Cleanse, Cleanse us. All unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. And some other translations say all wickedness. Okay. And so hopefully we've got that. I'm done. Hopefully we've got that. And that is to understand that the thoughts or the issues of life are the symptoms. Understand that if we have symptoms in, of our issues in life, that to fix those issues or to fix those symptoms, we must deal with the heart because the heart is the root of the problem. OK, OK. And by and here's here's how this thing working. And I'm really, really, really done. I didn't say that too many times. Here's how that works. When you go to God and you confess to God, God, I have issues. I have symptoms. I have problems. I have sin. All right. My thoughts are not the thoughts that you would have for me to have. OK, when you can when you when you admit that, here's what God does. God begins to reveal to you not the symptoms, but he reveals to you the real problems in your heart. Does that make sense? And here's some of those real problems. Pride, lust, selfishness, envy, bitterness, idolatry. Is that making sense? And so that gives God the opportunity to begin to show you where your what condition your heart really is in. And once you know that, then it's time to turn from your wicked ways, so to speak. 
And when, you know, as you do that, you begin to turn and begin to fight, uh, fight for your heart and to value the importance of your heart in your life. If you begin to turn towards God in that way to say, God, help me to heal my heart. Then your thoughts will change. Then your issues will change. Now, will you no longer have issues? No. You know, you'll still have a thorn in your flesh to remind you that you need to rely on God to help heal you in that way. But the truth is, is that the issues you had today, you should not be having the same issues this time next year. Right. The issues you had 10 years ago, you shouldn't still be wrestling with those issues. But if you haven't dealt with the heart of the matter, yeah, you probably will be still dealing with those issues because you've never gone to the root of the problem. You've never dealt with the condition of your heart. Is that making sense? All right. Praise.